Hey friends, welcome back. Now I know I was gone for all of 2023, but that's with really good reason. You see, 2023 was an interesting year. Hmm. It was an incredibly fun year. Where all the famous people are because we like to hang out with famous people and we should hang out yes, with famous people. Yes, agreed. Because we're amazing. We're, hey, yes, that felt right? slightly yes. nice. This is what happens when you get on those buses that says church bus. <laughs> this is exactly what happens. And life got in the way, so it became a busy year. Wow. So, 2024, new year, and I need to get back in this shop. And what better way than to start with something small? You know, get my feet wet. So I built this. I mean, it, it's small-ish, right? Yep, I'm at it again, building another arcade machine. But this one is slightly different. You see, there's a Japanese company named Taito that makes a style of machine called Bulix. These machines are also called candy cabs and are built for players to sit down and game rather than stand like the traditional arcade machines. I instantly fell in love with the design and set out to make my own version. Now, if you're interested in making your own machine, I have plans available right now in my Etsy store. The link is in the description below. Throughout this video, you'll see me make use of three quarter inch strips of plywood. These help me with panel placement and alignment. See, this is the perfect situation for those strips. Now that the base is done, I moved on to the side panels. After making three more of these panels, I used this awesome router bit to ensure that all these parts are identical. There we go. And if you thought that first router bit was impressive, look at this one. Now I'll work on the control panel base. This consists of a lot more parts than you would think. This is an important piece as it's the starting point for the control panel base. That looks slightly familiar. Now that the rear part is all set up, it's time to work on the front. So I'll make two angle cuts.
Next, I'll go ahead and trace out the side parts. Now I have to make four of these. Then, once I'm done, I'll head straight to the bandsaw. I then laminate two parts together, bevel, and that gives me one of the sides. Rinse and repeat. Now's a good time to clear the center area. I've cut down some scraps that'll serve as the ledge to hold the control panel in place. But for now, I'm gonna use the Forster bit, cut some holes, add some bolts, and that way this part can be attached to the base. Now I'm routing out a slight pocket for the rear opening so that the plexiglass can fit right in place. I'm gonna be using these inserts throughout the rest of the cabinet. For here, I added some scraps in place, and as you can see, I've used those inserts so I can lock down the actual controls area. So I have this template here that I've cut down. Basically, it's four sheets of paper taped together, and all I'm gonna do is set the pilot hole for each of these crosses. Um, all these holes are the same size, so I'm going to use a 1 and 1 8 spade bit. Go ahead and cut the holes. I have my sacrificial lumber underneath, and yeah, go ahead and get started on the control panel. I've gone ahead and attached the sides just with a couple of bolts, nothing special. Let's move on to the feet. First, I take the 2x4s to the table saw to cut off the rounded edges. Looks better this way. Like everything else, once the parts are all cut out, assembly begins. There we go, perfect. So next up, let's work on the speaker panel. I first make sure I make a mark that's two inches from the edge. Then I make some marks that are even. Then I bust out the compass, set it to two inches, and make sure it hits on all the marks that I've made. With the top speaker panel done, I move on to the bottom speaker panel. Okay, using the circular hole bit made it cleaner and much faster. The speakers are pretty straightforward. First you put in this particular bracket, then you put the speaker right on top, your screws are going to go right on top of that. And then you put this cover on. Now, I'm not going to put it on right now because it's kind of a pain in the butt to take that thing back off. So there you have it.
For the arch parts, I have to make six identical parts as the one I'm cutting right here. So the first one I cut by hand, then I decided to use the other tool in the shop, the CNC, to make the additional five. Here I'm cutting the center part, sanding it up so that when I assemble everything, it all fits nice and snug. So here's all the parts glued together. There's the bevel that I made, same bevel as the sides. I'll go ahead and put this part in here and perfect. I will make a plexiglass piece that goes in front of that as well. To attach the arch to the rest of the cabinet, I decided to go with dowels. Now, of course, there are plenty of hinges you could use for the door. I chose the simple one, this style. With this style of hinge, I found it easier to attach the top hinge first, obviously make your holes in the top and the bottom of the base, and then add your lower hinge after getting the door in place. Finally, I need to work on the rear lower part of the cabinet. So first I'll add a power connector here. Then I'll go ahead and punch some holes in for air circulation. Now I'll work on the rear door. I know I said the circular hole bit was much faster, but here I am using the jigsaw again. Everyone just calm down, just calm down. I'm not ashamed to say it, but uh, I went pillaging in the neighbor's garbage and got this, uh, got this hinge. So there. More parts from the pillaging of my neighbor's garbage. And rather than hardware, I decided to just make a finger hole. That way I can pull the door open. Now the monitor assembly part is a little tricky. After a few measurements, I go ahead and attach the monitor with just one screw per side. And that way I can use this strip of wood here to make sure everything is nice and flush. Now that that's in place, I need a nice front cover to tie everything together. First, I cut the cover to size so it fits right in front of the monitor and the speaker hole panels. Then, I have to cut out the center area so that the monitor will show. Basically, a nice framed out center cover. I'll later use Velcro to make all of this stick together. For the plexiglass, I used my CNC to cut this part and this part. Now, if you don't have a CNC, use a jigsaw and use plexiglass blades. 
Now don't miss part two coming soon. We have to paint this thing, put the electronics in, and finish this thing up. So if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do so. Hit the bell, and that way you won't miss the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.